Okay guys, so we got an interesting one here. So, my Cavalier with the supercharger. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So when you try to start it, it just clicks. Okay, we get no starter. We get no starter cranking. So I had a bump started this morning to get it to the shop. So, I'll show you guys what I did real quick. So pulled the intake off. The supercharger's in the way of the battery terminals here. And, uh, Gonna order a new air filter. This only lasted like a year. Got really nasty already. I think it was sucking it up into the into the housing. I didn't use the run a filter, which wasn't the best idea, but it worked. But anyway, we tested the battery with this. I don't really trust these too much. These tests, I always load test them, but can't really load test unless you put a carbon pile in there. So we got 551. Um, I don't know if this, I don't even know if this battery's fully charged because the car was sitting for like two weeks since this happened. So we're going to lift the car up so we can get to, hopefully get to the starter. I don't remember if the supercharger's in the way. I'm hoping we don't have to pull the supercharger off, but we might. Okay guys, so I'm looking at the starter. Fire's a tiny bit green, but it doesn't look green enough to cause any issues. Uh, yeah, this kind of sucks because... Heat exchanger pumps like right in my way. So I guess I'm gonna have to pull the pump down, maybe pull it out of the way, and then we can probably we can probably get that out, a starter out. Yeah, I think this is the original starter with 180,000 miles on it. So we're gonna load test the starter. Good. Yeah, look at that. We have a bad ground or power. Okay guys, so we're gonna load test the ground right here going to the block. I got it right on the stud, coming to the battery. So let's do this one. Look at that, so that's good. So battery to the block is good. Actually to the stud. Let's see, can we get on the bell housing anywhere? Let's make sure that, try to go right here on the block. Right there, all well, the bell housing. Let's see if this one works. So bell housing. It's no good. So wait a second. Do we have a bad connection? This is exciting. So it's bad connection on the bell housing. Do we have a bad connection on the engine? So now, got a good connection to the engine up here. Hang on, let me make sure that this was actually good on the bell housing. Because this might be an issue with just the bell housing being built up with stuff right here. Yeah, that's what it was, just built up on the stuff. That's 100 amps that we're pulling right there. Uh, maybe we should go back under and just double check that real quick. Because we know we're good right here. Let's go back under. This is variables. But I wanted to do some quick checks to show you guys so I can do it without fancy tools. Okay guys, so I connected my ground wire right here. To a block. And then we got our starter. We're connected to our starter power right there okay so we have 12 volts let's go crank this and we'll see we'll find out where it drops at so there we go we got that so now let's see let's see what we got So let's go back. I brought this up for visual. Okay, so we have, let's see, what are we dropping down to? We're dropping down to almost zero volts. Let's see, show. 
cursor two. We drop it down to 1.3 volts when we turn the starter on. So now I guess we'll have to test our drop on the power cable. So I'm gonna see if I can move my ground. We'll check it. Uh, I might need a longer lead because I'm gonna run the I'm gonna run one wire to the positive side of the post and the other one to our power underneath. Actually I might be able to just run it down through. We're just gonna have to move this up. So let's take this other one off. There we go. And we'll connect them up here. And then we'll see what our voltage drop is on the power wire. Okay guys, so I got my yellow lead right here. And then we got the uh, we got the black lead right here on the starter. Positive right there. So right now we have zero volts. So when we go to start this, if we see it drop probably more than like a volt or a half a volt, then we know we got a bad starter. I mean not a bad start, but we got a bad power feed. There we go. So let's go check this out. You know what, why are we on a 50 volt scale? Let's turn this down. Let's do this again. It's not gonna make a difference though. So we're not seeing any change because that means we have no current flow through here. Let's go back. Yep, we have no change. So I'm going to save this. So this means our issue is at the starter post. So I bet you if we go from the ground down there, I mean, not the ground, but the terminal to the wire, we're probably going to see a voltage drop. Or I guess our voltage drop would be on the ground side then. Okay guys, so now we got the yellow lead on our battery positive wire going to the starter right there. And then the ground is on our battery positive stud right there in the starter. So we're gonna go try to crank this and we'll see what it does. Let's see. Let's see what this does. This a couple times. Hopefully, we can figure it out. Now, you could be doing the same thing like this with the load tester, but uh, it's easier to show you guys this way. Oh, look at that, guys. Let's see. There we go. So, we have, we have a 10 volt drop, 10 and a half volt drop. So that, that confirms it. Our uh, starter has a bad connection right there. So, I'm gonna save this, we're gonna take those terminals off and we'll check, see what, how corroded they are. So guys, look how crusty these wires were. Look at that one, look at the one up here. That's why we had our bad connection. Look at that. So I'm gonna clean these off, we'll put them back on and we'll see if it fixes it. I'll probably just do the starter anyway. But uh, we'll check this out. 
Okay guys, so uh, I cleaned it all up. We're gonna clamp our leads back on and we'll see if we get a voltage drop now. And uh, I'm gonna set everything up, lower the car back down, we'll try it. Okay guys, so we'll go over, we'll try to start this. See if it starts. If it starts, then we know that's our problem. I have a good feeling it's gonna start unless we've got a bad starter on top of it. But we have a voltage drop, so something has to be trying to move. Oh, I didn't connect the battery back up. Look at that. So I'm gonna put connect that back up. Okay, battery's connected back up. Uh, graphing meter's on. Let's see. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Look at that. We fixed it. No parts needed. Let's go back and look at this. Look at that. We don't even have a voltage drop. I thought we would actually measure something, but it might be too small to show up on the meter. Let me make sure our leads didn't come off. Nope, our leads are still on there, so we don't have any drop across there. There we go, so now we'll quick test the starter. Uh, we can actually test it with the lap scope. And we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so we're going to use the AES Wave modified amp clamp. It's the high amp one. We'll go back. Let's see, go back. We want to go to lab scope. Uh, four channel. We can turn these off. And we want one volt. Uh, let's go back because we got to move our cursor or our trigger. Go to two seconds, I think. Yeah, two seconds will probably be enough. Where's our trigger at? Where is our trigger? Oh, it's off. There we go. Okay, so we want to drag our trigger down. There we go. We'll go to one volt because this amp clamp is uh, one volt or one millivolt equals one amp so a hundred millivolts should be a hundred amps so we want to be like down here there we go um, just leave it how it is and we'll start this up twice and we'll see our starter gets it's good if it has a lot of hash in it usually a bad starter if you see any dropouts bad starter oh we should probably do a clear flood there we go clear floods where you hold the gas pedal all the way down that way it disables fuel let's see if we got it Oh, our amp clamp's upside down. It looks really good though, guys. Let's uh, flip our amp clamp around. We'll do that again. Yeah, um, you can invert it in the tool too, but I'll just flip it. You just press invert right there. But we'll uh, do this again. Let's see. Do a clear flood. There we go. So let's check this out. And look at that.
Guys, I don't see a problem with this starter at all. See that? It's all even. You don't have, like, you would see, like, all this hash in the waveform. But we are good. We are good. So I'm going to get this all back together. That was our problem. Okay, guys, we got it back together. Let's see. Let's try to start this real quick. Look at that, guys. So I hope you guys like it.